So I want to preach this morning. Of course, this is the Sunday prior to uh, the New Year's. So you know, we have to preach the obligatory New Year's Eve sermon where you know, I'm going to get up and tell you about all the resolutions that you need to make and how we need to you know, do all of that. But uh, you know, I, there's a lot of different things we could preach about and, uh, when it comes to New Year, resol New Year resolutions. But the one resolution I think we all need to make and the one resolution that would probably, in fact, most definitely benefit everybody the most is the resolution to read your Bible. Amen. Now, this isn't a very deep subject this, as far as the actual reading of the Bible. This isn't, uh, you know, a very profound uh, sermon. But I will say this, it is probably one of the most essential truths that we need to learn as Christians. Uh, so many Christians live their Christian life without reading the Bible. They go years, they'll go the whole Christian life without getting in the Word of God and having read it one time through. You know, I've heard it said, and I agree with the statement, that if you read the Bible even one time through, cover to cover, you know, you're going to be in, in a very small uh, percentage of people, of Christians. Uh, the vast majority of Christians, I believe today, are not reading their Bibles. I mean, how else do you explain the, uh, just how, how, how false doctrine has just taken off and goes unchallenged in the world today? How is it that so many Christians are just getting duped by all these uh, deceptions, are getting... Uh, conned by all these false doctrines? How is it that they're just going along with the world's philosophies? It's because they're not opening up the Bible and reading it for themselves. And, you know, it's really, and the, it, when we preach a sermon like this, it's really get up to, it's easy to get up and just harp on it and say, hey, you need to be read Bible, and that's all true. But I think sometimes when we preach sermons like this, we forget about the fact that, you know, Bible reading, though it can at times be difficult, and sometimes it takes just character to get ourselves up in the morning and to get in the Word of God and force ourselves to read. Sometimes I understand we all go through those seasons. But let's not forget the blessing that it is to read the Bible. And that's the title of the sermon this morning, the blessing of Bible reading, the blessing of Bible reading. You know, it's a real privilege that we have to read the Bible. Of course, here in Proverbs chapter 8, we read about, uh, you know, wisdom. You know, being personified here, uh, and and really, what is wisdom? Well, it's the Word of God. You know, this. You know, Jesus is the Word of God. He was there from the beginning, from everlasting. You know, he is all these things before the Lord ever created the heavens or the earth. You know, the Lord was there with Him, and that you could say the same thing about the very Word of God. So we have in our hands tonight or this morning uh, in this book a very precious thing. We have something that's very valuable, and something it says there that you know if we if we will. Uh, uh, hearken unto it you know we're going to have uh, we're going to be blessed we're going to find uh, as it says there in, a lot, in the in those latter verses we'll find life we shall obtain favor you know how are you going to how are you going to find life and obtain favor in your life you're going to do it by reading uh, by taking heed according to this word by getting in it reading and understanding what it says and understanding what you need to do as a christian in order to live a life that god can bless what is it that god expects of you you know, God saves us, you know, and he doesn't just leave us there. God wants us to go on and live a life for him. Uh, God wants us to do things, certain things and not do other things. And God wants us to think a certain way and not think another way. And, you know, that's, that's a lot to try and cram into just one sermon. You know, it's, in fact, it's a lot to try and cram into a whole year's worth of sermons. In fact, you know, it would take a whole lifetime to get up here and to preach everything that, that God wants us to know. And, you know, often many of those truths have to be repeated over and over and over again, let alone trying to cover everything else that, that we all need to know as Christians. And that's why it's so important that we as individuals, that we as Christians spend the time that we need to spend individually ourselves in reading the Bible and not just coming to church and relying on, on, on the preacher to just teach us everything there is to know out of the Word of God. That there's things that we can learn on our own out of the Bible and that preaching can confirm and that preaching can uh, shore up or clarify, but there's a lot in the Bible that we need to just learn on our own. How are you going to learn it if you're not opening it up and reading it? And of course, you know, that's, you know, getting more into the, hey, you need to read your Bible and kind of, uh, you know, getting after folks, but let's not forget along the way that it's a blessing, that it's a real privilege to be able to read the Bible. That, uh, the, and I want to just talk about a few things tonight or this morning about why we should read our Bible. And specifically, we'll get into and, and towards the end about how, how to go about actually reading your Bible, you know, and, and it sounds simple, but I think there's some ways that we can go about it that would make it uh, perhaps more of a blessing to us. So again, of all the resolutions you could be making this time of year, I mean, this time of year, a lot of folks are going over all the things that they plan on, on doing in the new year, and uh, that's great. You know, I think that people should do that and that it's, it's helpful. 
and that um, people, it's good to set goals in life and, to, and have things that we strive for and work towards and, and things that are causes to be better people. But all those things are for naught if, if we're not reading our Bible. All those things, you know, they pale in comparison to the benefits that you can glean, the blessings that will come to you if you read your Bible daily. So notice here, you know, that, that uh, you know, uh, he's saying here in, in verse uh, 30, uh, 34, it says, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my door. Whenever I've read that verse uh, throughout my Christian life, I've always thought about Bible reading. Oh, I thought that reminds me of somebody getting up in the morning and waiting to hear from God Amen. daily at his gates, getting up there early and getting with God and listening to what God has to say out of uh, his word. It's be like opening the door, waiting at the gates of, of the Lord's house. So, you know, it's right here in this book. And, <clears throat> you know, the reason why is because it says here in verse 35, for whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. You know, these, he says in verse 33, hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. You know, the things that we're going to learn out of this book are the things that are going to make us wise people and not foolish. Um, it's, you know, the Bible has wisdom and instruction for every area of your life. You know, I've said that time and time again, that there's no area in your life that the Bible does not address. You know, you have some question about something in your life, the Bible addresses it. Whether it's, you know, our jobs, whether it's our families, whether it's our church, you know, whatever area it is, you name it, God's got it covered in his book. He has wisdom there for us to glean. The question is, are we going there? Are we getting to his gates? Are we watching daily to get that wisdom that we need? Uh, <clears throat> if you would, turn over to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I'll remind us of the words of Jesus. He said, Matthew 7, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not. You know, that's an analogy that he's giving there for life, that we want to build our lives upon the rock of Jesus Christ, that we want to be founded upon the rock that is Christ. And that if we'll do that, when the storms of life come, when the waves beat, we are going to stand sure. But how is that done? It's through hearing these sayings of mine. It's not just doing them. I mean, how are you ever going to know what to do if you've never heard? Right. How are you ever going to know how to, you know, uh, we think about, you know, we as men, we like to, some, you know, we don't like to, but, uh, you know, I've had several children now and I've had the great pleasure of having to assemble not only cribs, but also bunk beds. You know, you go to the, you go to that Swedish torture place, Ikea, where they, when they give you those, those, everything comes in a tiny little box, you know, and it's this huge piece of uh, furniture. And we as men, we like ah, we pull out the instructions and we take a look at the fr front page and then we just throw it aside. I got this. <laughs> I can figure this out. You know, and then you assemble it and then you realize you probably should have built it inside the room you were putting it in because <laughs> it won't fit through the door. Ask me, been there, done that, right? <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, so often I, I get about halfway into it or not even that. I'll be, I've learned now to just, you know, just read the instructions. You know, figure out, lay it all out, get an idea of what's going on here and don't, don't have this attitude that you just can figure it out. Well, it's the same way in life. You know, this is God's instruction book. Right. How are you going to assemble your life? How are you going to put your life together? How are you going to keep it from just being some jumbled mess with a bunch of, you know, leftover parts over here that never found a place to go? You're going to do that by uh, taking the time to open up the instructions and read for yourself what they say, you know, and, and figure out what it is that you need to do. So you'll never know what to do if you don't first hear these sayings of mine. We always get so excited about how we're going to live for Jesus, so we're going to do all these things, and that's great. We're very fervent about serving the Lord. But how are you going to serve Him if you don't know what it is that's expected of you? It's great to have that, 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 uh, you know, that fervency, but you know, the zeal without knowledge is not good. It's good to have zeal, but you also have to have the knowledge too. The Bible says in James chapter 1, I'll read to you, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man uh, beholding his face in a natural glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth uh, go his way, and straightway forget, forgetteth what manner of man he was. So again, we don't want to go to the other extreme, right? Where we're looking in the Bible, we're reading it, we're in it, but then we're not doing the things that it says. We have to find a balance in life. You know, we have to not only read the things and actually hear the things that God has for us to do, but then to also do them. You know, and, and let's not put the, uh, the cart before the horse. You know, you got to hear and then do. That is the step there. 
So look there in Psalm 119, uh, verse 97, where he says, Oh, how I uh, love I thy law. You know, apparently, uh, you know, David was not part of a, you know, neo-evangelical uh, hyper-grace church, you know, <laughs> that just wanted to dismiss the law. You know, this is a little side note, that he actually loved the law. Yeah, right. That he read the Old Testament, he read the things in Moses and said, these are good yeah. and I love them. You know, that's the attitude, attitude we had to have. He says, oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. You know, if you love something, you tend to think about it, don't you? We tend to think about those things that we enjoy and love. We, we let our minds dwell on those things. Well, can we say that about the Word of God? Can we say that we're meditating it all the day? We're thinking about it? And he goes in verse 98, he says, Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. You know, we have a lot of enemies in this Christian life. And if the blessing, one of the blessings of the Bible is that you're going to be wiser than your enemies. You know, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to oppose you in your Christian life. They're going to try to stop you from living for God. And you're going to need the wisdom to not let them stop you. And how do you get that? Through his law, through his book, by loving it, by meditating it. For keeping them with me, he says, for they are ever with me, speaking of his commandments. You know, back then, that was probably a little bit harder. You know, I, I think David's probably speaking more in the sense that he carried these things about in his heart. He's, you know, he said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And, you know, that's how, that's how uh, David rather... Uh, you know, had these things ever with him. You know, we do the same today if we're memorizing and meditating upon the Word of God. But we even have more of an advantage that we have. We can have the Word of God physically with us at all times. And then we think about our smartphones. I mean, there's you could have the Bible on, at your fingertips at all, at all times. We have a physical copy at all times. It's a blessing to have. He goes on in verse 90, 99. He says, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. You know, not only is the Bible going, reading your Bible and meditating upon it going to make you, uh, you know, be able to withstand your enemies, but it's also it could even make you wiser than your teachers. You know, those that would might get up and, and preach error, false doctrine, that type of thing happens, or make a mistake when they get up and teach the Word of God. You know, you could be wiser in that area if you've read the Word of God. You know, you could you could over, you know, maybe some false teachers come along and trying to influence you or pulling you aside and trying to teach you some false doctrine and corrupt you. If you've been meditating and reading the Word of God, one of the blessings is, is that that's not going to happen. You're going to be able to say, hey, you know, what you're teaching is wrong, and here's why, right. and, and separate yourself from, from such. <laughs> he goes on and says in verse uh, 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. Uh, I have refrained my, refrained my feet from e every evil way, that I might keep thy word, I have not departed from thy judgment, judgments, for thou hast taught me. Look at verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste! Exclamation point. You know, this is an exclamation. He's saying, look, your words are sweet to my taste. Now, I don't think that, obviously, David wasn't, you know, taking fork and knife and literally cutting up the word of God and eating it. But he's saying, spiritually, I devoured your word. I ate it. I thrived on it. I survived it. It was my meat daily. And he said, I loved it. It was sweet unto my taste. Sweeter uh, than honey to my mouth, through thy precepts I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Amen. You know, maybe, maybe we see somebody that hates some false way, and we say, well, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, maybe we need to learn to get understanding. Maybe we need to uh, be found in God's precepts more. Maybe when we spend our own time in the Word of God, maybe when we start reading the Bible for ourselves, we'll start to agree with people more who hate every false way. It won't be so offensive when, when, when we hear somebody get up and rip on some sin or whatever it is. We'll say, you know what? That is what the Bible says. I agree with it because I love it. It's sweet unto my taste and I hate every false way. <clears throat> so let's not focus uh, you know, so much on doing... Uh, you know, we, let me just move on here. That's a, that's a dumb point to make right now. But Reasons to read. I want to get into reasons to read. So we're talking about the blessings of Bible reading. What's the blessings of Bible reading? You know, it's going to make us wiser than our enemies. It's going to make us uh, wiser than even those that would instruct us. It would make us, uh, you know, it's going to give us wisdom and understanding. So what are some reasons to read? Well, number one is because it's a blessing. You know, reading the Bible is going to be a blessing to you in so many ways. But how about this? It's a command to read the Bible. You know, maybe, maybe re Bible reading just doesn't, you know, it's not, it's just not going to excite you. It's just not something that you're going to be thrilled to do. 
You know, especially if you're, you know, you know if you're one that's new to it and, and, you're, and you haven't done it before, the idea of reading, now, a book, I mean, this isn't, this isn't some thin little book. You know, this isn't, uh, you know, this isn't something your, your kid, you're going to pick up in the children's section at the public library. You know, this isn't, this isn't that. Now, this is a large print, so don't let this intimidate you, okay? <laughs> so this is a rather thick Bible, but it's still a long book. 1,189 chapters. It's a long book. There's a lot to read. And you know what? We might, we might say, I don't feel like David this morning. I don't love his law. You know, I don't, I don't find myself wanting to get up and read the Bible like I should. In fact, when I do it, sometimes it's kind of it's hard to do. I have to drag my eyes across, and half the time I get to the end of the chapter, and I go, what did I just read? Because I'm so distracted, right? But here's the thing. You need to read one because it's a command. And here's what you'll find. The more you read the Bible, the more you'll want to read the Bible. If we would just start reading it, eventually some God will speak to us out of His Word. You know, maybe we're not, get, we're not understanding some section. We're not getting something out of it. Maybe we wouldn't even, you know, and that's where a lot of people stumble is they, they get to something in the Word of God that confuses them, and then they park it right there. They try to figure that out. You know, you just keep reading. You know, the answer might be in the next page. It might be in the next book. It might be in the next testament. You know, it might be found the next time you read it through. But, uh, you know, don't get hung up on things you don't understand. Just keep reading and get what you can out of it. And eventually, you know, if we do that, we're going to get something out of the Word of God, and God is going to speak to us. And when the God of the, <laughs> when the, when, when the, you know, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, when the, you know, the Most High speaks to you, the word of God I mean that's a beautiful thing I mean what what else on earth compares to that what other experience is going is going to even come close to that to having you know the, the true and living God speak to you out of this book and if you've if you've ever experienced that you know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying obviously that God's speaking to you in an audible voice but you know our spirit bears witness with his spirit and the, the word of God begins to speak to us there's something in it that's that stands out to us that speaks to some situation that we're in in life or encourages us or convicts us or whatever it might be, that's God speaking to us and, and that's a great reason to read right there. But, even, you know, but you'll never know that if you don't obey the command to read. Uh, we've been going through Deuteronomy and we're, we aren't there yet, but I'll remind us from Deuteronomy chapter 17 where it says, uh, speaking of the king, right? These are the commandments that he gave to a king. And he said, it shall be, and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom uh, that he shall write him a copy of the law out of the book which is before the priests and Levites. So back then, God was commanding the, the kings and said, look, you need to take the law from the Levite and write out your own copy. You know, because obviously they didn't have the printing press back then. And he had to have it. And why did God want him to write it? You know, just so, just as like some form of discipline, you know, like after school, I have been a very bad boy. I've been a, not that. He wanted him to read, he wanted to write it down so that he would read it. He says in verse 19, and it shall be with him. And he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. So why, are, why did he want him to write it? So that it would be with him all the days of his life and that he would read therein all the days of, of his life. They say, well, that's for the kings. You know, that's, that's for kings. Well, God, the Bible says God has made us kings and priests unto our God. That we are, we are, we, you know, we are a peculiar people. You know, this applies to us today, too. We should read all therein the days of our life. We should be found reading it for the exact same reasons that we would learn to fear God and to keep all His commandments and His statutes and do them. You know, it goes back to the point I, I was making earlier. How are you going to learn to do the things that God has commanded if you're not reading them? You know, and, and often as Christians, you know, how is it that someone who's born again, is saved, so often can just drift out of the, out of the will of God and go into sin, get out of church, get back, backslidden, I guarantee you that person's not reading their Bible. Right. You know, and probably what, what might have kept them in church and kept them right with God is if they'd been reading their Bible. Maybe they were dealing with some temptation. They were in some situation where if they had just read their Bible that day, God would have said, hey, don't do that. And when that temptation came, they would have been able to recall, oh, I read about this this morning. And instead of getting pulled out, uh, you know, taken aside by uh, some false teacher or getting involved in some sin, you know, they would recall the words of God and they'd say, whoa, I just read that this morning. And uh, you know what? I'm going to fear God. I'm going to keep His commandments. You know, that's how important Bible reading is. I mean, it'll make or, be or break your Christian life, that one thing right there. It's essential. And it's such a simple thing to just think about, you know, the, 
you know, I remember uh, before I got saved, some, some guy was trying to get all clever and cute with me and trying to be all deep and profound, and he was just messing with me, and he says, he said, son, do you even know how to read the Bible? And I was like, man, this is, gonna, this is interesting. How do you read the Bible? He's, he's like, you start at the front, and you go to the back. <laughs> and he just smiled and walked away, and I said, wow. <laughs> deep, man. <laughs> right? It's such a simple thing to think, wow, just reading the Bible, page after page. You know, black letters on, on, on white paper. You know, it's nothing, nothing real, seemingly profound. It's a real simple action. But it'll make or break your Christian life. It'll lead to either you fearing the Lord and receiving His blessing or not. Uh, you, and, and uh, you know, so one of the reasons to read the Bible is because it's a command. That's one of the blessings that we have is that if we will learn to obey His commandments. And not only that, it's, it's necessary, you know, for, for study. You know, the Bible commands that we are to study to show thyself approved unto God. That we need to know what this book says. That we need to, so we need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, especially those of us that are going to be teaching the word of God. You know, in any capacity. You know, and we think often when we say that, oh, if you teach the word of God, you should study it, right? Well, yeah, obviously. And you say, oh, that's for the preacher. Well, let me ask you this. Are you a parent? Because we've been reading in Deuteronomy where God says, thou shalt teach them. You know, when thou risest up, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down. You know, that the parents are to be teaching their children the word of God as well. It's not just the preacher. That, that, you know, and so we all have some area where we're teaching. You know, maybe it's a friend or a co-worker, whatever it is. How are you going to know what to teach them if you haven't been reading it? And what a blessing that is to be able to teach the word of God to somebody. Amen. To have learned something for yourself and to be able to share it with somebody else. Say, hey, you know, I see you're going through this in life. You know, I went through that, and this is what I learned from the Word of God. Can I share this with you? Or maybe this will help solve your problem. That's a blessing to be able to be a blessing to somebody else. You need it for, uh, you need to read it because it's, it's, it's a command, because it's necessary for study. And, you know, we need it for spiritual strength. You know, that's another blessing from reading the Word of God is that it's going to strengthen you spiritually. It's going to keep you strong in the Lord. Now, if you would, turn over to, uh, turn over to Job. Uh, Job chapter 23. <clears throat> you know, we're living in a culture that, that uh, you know, they put a lot of emphasis on being strong, right? They, this, this whole fitness culture and all of that, and that's a good thing, right? But I wonder how many of these, you know, the, you, we, sometimes I like to watch these strongman competitions. You, you've never seen these, you know? These guys that are going out and, like, pulling semi-tractors and planes. They're putting a rope in their teeth and, like, you know, Lifting up whatever, and, and they do the, the atlas stones and everything. It's pretty cool, right? Real strong guys. But I have to ask myself sometimes, I wonder, I wonder how strong they are spiritually. I mean, sure, they can lift whatever off the ground, but, you know, how strong are they spiritually? What's it going to take to give them, get them to give in to some sin? You know, do they even know the Lord? <coughs> you know, the real strength that we ought to admire are people that are spiritually strong. Those are the people that we should be most, uh, we should most want to emulate. You know, not just some guy who can, you know, you know, deadlift a Volkswagen or whatever, you know. <laughs> as impressive as that is, right? You know, physically. You know what's more impressive, though, is to see somebody who's spiritually strong. That can withstand, the, the, you know, Satan's onslaught. Right. That can withstand, uh, you know, all the things that come with taking a stand for the Word of God. That's what's truly impressive. <clears throat> and that's, you know, you know what, how you're going to get there, how you're going to be a spiritually strong person? By reading the Bible. It's essential. You know, just like that, you know, that, that strong man, you know, he didn't get strong by not eating his Wheaties, you know, <laughs> or whatever it is they, I'm sure they're eating that, they're not eating Wheaties, but you watch these strong guys, what they eat, some of these guys, they're eating everything, right? And they're like these 10,000 calorie a day diets and whatever. It's, it's like they do spend more time eating than they do working out. It's crazy, right? They wouldn't get that strong if they weren't getting in the daily nutrition and getting in the, the proteins and all of that that they need to, to grow those muscles. It's the same with us spiritually. You know, We need to take in the Word of God spiritually so that we can put on spiritual muscle, so that we can gain spiritual strength. Uh, the Bible says in John 15, I'll read to you, it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what, shall be what you will, and it shall be done unto you. I mean, there's a whole other point right there. You, know? you want your prayers answered? Let God's words abide in you. And he says, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my commandments and abide in his love. How are you going to abide in God and keep, have his strength? By keeping his commandments. How are you going to know the commandments if you don't read the Bible? He says there in Job 23, look at verse 12. 
Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Now, some people say, you know, you should, this is teaching us that, you know, it's more important to, to read the Bible than eat, you know, or, or they'll say things like, you know, uh, if it came down to food or the Bible, I'd take food. Well, you know, here's the thing. It, it's okay to go, they'll, they'll say like, well, I won't eat breakfast until I've read the Bible. Now, I'm not going to get up here and say that's what this is saying, right? But what he's saying here is he's showing that, you know, hey, more important than what you're going to put in your mouth is what you're going to put in your heart that day. Yeah. More important than what you're going to lift up on some fork or a spoon and shovel into your face is what you're going to lift up with your two hands and, and lay your eyes upon and, and take in, you know, spiritually ingest. That's more important. You know, it's not saying that we should just never eat or something, something crazy like that. What he's saying is, look, you, I mean, think about how important food is. It's very important, especially as Baptists, right? <laughs> We're going to have that party here later, you know, for the ladies, the, the baby shower. There's going to be food involved, buddy, right? You can't have a good time without the food. But honestly, though, how, how long could you go? I mean, think about how important food is to that, to that, that weightlifter, you know, that strong man. It's essential. Got to have it. And we have to have it, too, to function. Go, go a few days without food. See what happens. And, you know, it, it's not fun. You get weak, you become anemic. You lose strength, right? You become a very weak person. Even if you don't get the pro maybe you're eating, but you're eating the wrong things. You're, getting the, you're not getting the proper nutrition. You're going to become weak and sickly. Well, it's the same thing spiritually. You know, if we're living on a spiritual diet of, you know, sugar and, and simple carbs, you know, we're not going to be strong Christians. If we're just living our Christian life off of, you know, would you eat one meal a week? Would you, who here eats one meal a week? I didn't think so. <laughs> so you are in a Baptist church, right? <laughs> Nobody does. I mean, there might be times or something, maybe people fast and things like that. I understand that's out there, but nobody eats just one meal a week. But a lot of us do that spiritually, don't we? We come to church and we get one meal a week. And then we get to the end of the week and we wonder, why am I spiritually dragging? Why is this so hard to live the Christian life? Why am I so down? Because you only ate one meal. Because you have no spiritual strength. Because you haven't been eating for yourself. You've been just coming to church and expecting to get the whole thing from the preacher. You know, and I've heard it said, and I agree with this as well, is that you know, this is not where you get the meat of the Word of God. I mean, the, we do give out strong meat. You know, as, as preachers, we endeavor to do that. But this is like, this is like additional. You know, this is uh, supplemental to your spiritual diet. Where you're going to get the, the, the nutrition that you need on a daily basis is alone with God, with the Bible open, yourself. That's where you, where you learn to feed yourself spiritually. That's where you're going to grow the most. I mean, you can't survive on one meal a week. You're not going to grow. Same way spiritually. Don't, you can't expect to thrive in the Christian life, to grow strong, if this is the only meat that you're getting throughout the week, is when you come here and, and you get you know, whatever it, whatever's being dished out that day. Because like I said in the beginning, there's so much more in the Bible than I could ever preach. I mean, I could preach on, I could, I could just say, look, I can't, even if I said, I'm never going to preach in the same thing again. I'm never going to repeat myself in my preaching. And there's nothing wrong with re-preaching re re the same truths. But great truths bear, need, uh, bear repeating. Yeah. You know, Paul said that, that, you know, that it's needful to put you in remembrance, you know, though you once knew this, to remind you again, you know, not to, rather than getting caught up and trying to learn some new thing, it's better to just relearn the things that we've forgotten, right? So what if I were to get up and say, hey, I'm never going to repeat myself in my preaching again. I'm never going to preach on the same topic again. I'm never going to re-preach the same passage again. I could preach my whole, I, we could go through this book and re-preach. You know, we could preach something new every week out of the Word of God. There's so much more than we could cover in a lifetime, in a, in a, you know, week by week. So, you know, how are you going to learn all those things? All the other things that might not get preached on. Or maybe you need to learn that, but you, you missed that service. You were sick, you were out, whatever. You know, maybe that's, that's where you're going to have to learn to feed yourself. Why? For spiritual strength. And how are you going to do that? When you begin to esteem the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. <clears throat> uh, you'll need it. So what are the blessings of, of Bible reading? One, you know, you learn more. You become more studied. You become more astute with the word of God. You can instruct others. You can be a blessing to other people. Uh, you know, you're obeying the command. God's going to bless you and speak to you if you, if you uh, obey the word or uh, you read the word of God. 
But how about this? You need it for spiritual safety. You want, to, you want the blessing of, of safety spiritually in your life? Well, you need to wor read the Word of God. Go over to Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. I'll read to us again from Psalm 119. I mean, if you want to read a chapter about Bible reading and why you should read it, go home and read Psalm 119. I know it's the longest chapter in the Bible, but go home and read it. The, every other word, like thy commandments, thy statutes, thy judgments, thy commandments, thy statutes, thy judgments, all the way through. It's just him. That's a whole chapter about him loving the Word of God, reading the Word of God, the benefits of the Word of God. It's a great chapter on Bible reading. <clears throat> he says in Psalm 119, verse 9, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy, way, uh, thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thou art my hiding place, my shield. I hope in thy word. You know, there's going to be times in life where we need God to protect us spiritually. When we are under attack, when we are feeling defeated, you know, when we are going to need a place to retreat to, that's the word of God. We feel like I'm, I, we feel like I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to quit this whole thing. I'm done with church. I'm done with the Christian life. It's too hard. I don't like this. It's not fun. It's not everything I thought it was going to be. Well, what's going to keep you from doing that is when you retreat to the Word of God, when you get in God's Word. Look there in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Man, when we trust in God and we have the pure Word of God, we have a shield in life. We have spiritual safety. We have, the, we have the, the shield of faith whereby we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, and it's another sermon, and we've preached about it in the past, but you know, when you got saved, you got, you got signed up for a fight. You got put on the front lines. And don't be surprised when the enemy starts firing at you in all, in, you know, all these different ways, trying to stop you from serving God. And you say, well, why, why would the enemy ever try to do that? Because of the numbers that you just read in that bulletin this morning. The 400 plus souls that got saved this year. You know, I didn't do that. That wasn't just one man that did that. I, in fact, I played a very small part in that. It was done by all of us. You know, that, that was a collective effort that we made there. Do you think the devil wants to see that number go higher next year? Do you think he wants more people getting saved? Do you think he wants to see, does, he, does he want to see more families in church and more families growing and more people getting right with God and more people growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you think that's what he wants? Absolutely not. He wants to fight us. He wants to stop us. He wants to get people out. He wants less soul saved. He wants to discourage us. He wants to put obstacles in our path, and he can do it, and he's good at it. So here's the thing. How are you going to withstand that attack? By having spiritual safety. And where is that going to be found? In the Word of God. You know, he said there, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? You know, with all the temptations that come at us, especially in our youth, all the things that come at us, you know, how are we going to keep our lives pure and clean? By taking heed according to thy word. By, by memorizing and, and, and hiding our, his word in our heart that we might not sin against him. So that's another blessing of reading God's word, isn't it? The spiritual safety that you receive from reading it. How about uh, to avoid error? I already kind of talked about this. You know, when people are bringing false doctrine, you're going to be able to correct them. You know, or to be, or you're, even more importantly, you yourself will not be in error. To avoid you being wrong about the Word of God or some, some thing in life. Uh, you know, that was what Jesus was constantly rebuking the Pharisees about, right? They'd come to him with some question. They'd try to catch him in his words. And how did he respond so often? Have you never read? Did you not read? Right. I mean, you go to Matthew chapter 21. Don't go there. But over and over again, he just says it. Hey, did you never read this in the Scriptures? Uh, they, he said, you do err, not knowing the Scriptures. What was their problem? What was their hang-up? Why is it they didn't get it? It's because they'd never read. That's why they were in error. So another blessing out of reading God's Word is that you will not be in error. You'll be right. That's a good feeling. I mean, that's, that, it's, it's no fun to admit you're wrong, is it? I've had to do it once. <laughs> or twice. Well, I mean, more than that. Right? But you know what? Sometimes we do. And we say, well, I don't want to have to do that again. <clears throat> well, get in God's word. You know? And people can say you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But as long as you're lining up with this, you're right. And, 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 and that's, that's really what matters. So I think I've kind of made my case as to why we should be reading the Bible. You know, we should be reading the Bible for all the blessings that it brings in our life. 
the protection, uh, you know, the protection against error, the protection against false doctrine, the protection that we get, uh, um, you know, from, from sin and from temptation, uh, the, the fact that we're going to receive spiritual strength to withstand the enemy, to all these great blessings. And there's probably so many more that we could stand here and talk about. And, and there's so many other blessings that we receive from just reading God's word. So how are we, how are we going to do it? They say, you know what? You convinced me. You know, hopefully that was enough you know, for me to, to twist your arm and say, you know what? One of my New Year's resolutions is, and I'll say this, if you don't make any other resolution this year except this one, it'll change your life. Amen. If you don't make any other resolution, I don't care what it is. If, if this is not on the top of your list, it, everything else is for naught. Read my Bible every day. I'm going to read my Bible every day for the next 365 days starting the new year. And you can even start today. You can even start tomorrow. You don't have to wait to the new year. And, uh, you know, if you said that, that's going to change your life. You're going to learn. So you're going to be, I mean, think about it. If you committed to that and you actually accomplished it, well, how, how much do you think your life's going to be better or worse at this time next year? Or is it going to be the same? I guarantee you it'll be better. Do you think you're going to know more about God and more about His Word or less if you read the Bible every day between now and then? You're going to know more, naturally. So why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we want that in our life? <clears throat> so, you know, hopefully that's enough to convince you. And, uh, you know, I want to just kind of get into the practicality. And this is something I've preached here before, probably about this time of year last year. But I'm going to do it again because, you know, it was a blessing to people then and hopefully it'll be a blessing to people now. So, how do I read my Bible every day? Well, I'm just going to give you some tips. I'm just going to give you some, you know, a lot of it's just going to be my opinion. But these are things that have helped me. These are things that will help you. Hopefully, you can take it or leave it, you know. But whatever you do, whatever works for you, as long as you're getting the Bible every day and getting some reading in, you know, great. Amen. You're going to be better off for it. You're going to receive these blessings that we talked about. <clears throat> so, how about just the practicality of, when to read. You know, when is the best time to say, I'm going to read my Bible every day. When is the best time? This isn't for everybody. I know some people, they probably do better at night than they do in the morning. For me, and I think for the vast majority of people, they would probably do better to read it first thing in the morning. You know, maybe get up, get a cup of coffee out, wake up a little bit. You know, in my house, it's really, it's great because it's usually, I mean, my kids are pretty early risers anyway, but, you know, at least it's quiet. You know, if they do get up, they're not ready to pull out all the toys and, and go bananas. You know, they, they want to sit down, they'll read a book, they'll read their Bible. So morning is usually best, I find, at least for myself and I think for a lot of people. And I think that's kind of a principle you see in Scripture too. I mean, if you think about when, uh, when God fed the manna from the, in the wilderness, right? When did he give it to him? He gave it to him first thing in the morning, you know, when the dew was upon the ground. That happens very early. You know, if you wake up too late, you're not going to see the dew upon the earth. You know, if you think about... Do we ever, I don't even know, do we ever get dew down here in, in Tucson, Arizona, yeah. Phoenix? Do they? Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's because I just don't have grass. I never notice. <laughs> anyway, the point being is that that happens real early in the morning. And as soon as the sun comes up, you know, it evaporates very quickly. But the manna is a picture of the Word of God. It's a picture of Jesus Christ. And I believe that's a good principle in Scripture. Now, I'm not saying if you don't read the Bible first thing in the morning that you're in sin. You know, if you wait to the end of your day to read it, that's good too. The point is, is that you're reading it. But think about it. I think reading in the morning is best because that's the day you're going to need some spiritual truth to get you through that day. That's the day that maybe God wants to show you something in the Bible that says, hey, I know what's coming later. And I need to show you something so that you can withstand some temptation or know how to handle some situation. So I think reading is best. You know, before the day gets busy. Because once the day gets going, it's so hard to carve out that time. You know, to say, you know, and especially if we've worked a long day, then to come home, you know, when we're, all we want to do is just eat and, and you know, t see the family and go to bed. I mean, that's another hard time. Like, well, I'll read right before bed. Well, you, you do that, your bedtime might come a little quicker than you might anticipate, you know. And so I think morning's best. That's just a, a tip, you know, do with it what you will. But uh, you know, one of the, probably the more important question that people need to ask themselves is, how much should they read? How much should you be reading? And this is different for everybody. You know, I can't say there's a one-size-fits-all plan. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're a busy uh, person, you know, you're a busy mom, you're a busy dad, you got a job, you maybe even run a business, you know, you're raising several children, you're homeschooling, I'm not going to get up here and say that you need to be reading your Bible four or five times a year. 
I mean, that's great if you can, that, but that's a lot of reading. You know, now, if you're a preacher, like myself or somebody, you know, that's probably essential. You need to be reading you know, four or five times a year. Now, how do you figure out how much you're going to read? Well, everybody's at different reading levels, but the typical person, think about this. If you're just an average reader, just average, if you could just read an average rate, you have the average reading capability, you could read the whole Bible one time in one year if you just read for 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day. You know the average person today spends 50 minutes on Facebook alone? <laughs> Can you give up 15 minutes of your Facebook time to, to read God's Word? Right. You know, get your face out of Facebook and get your face in God's book and spend some time there. <clears throat> I mean, just think about that. Hey, that's a great resolution to make this year. Amen. That's a life-changing resolution. I'm going to read my Bible one time, cover to cover. And if you do that, you're going to be in the high percentile. You're going to be one of the rare Christians that have actually done that. You know, and if you do that, what's it going to take? Well, the average person, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Maybe it'll take 30. Maybe you do 15 in the morning, 15 at night, 15 in the morning, 15 in my lunch break, 15 before, whatever it is. But you need to read some amount. You know, you determine that. Now, the other extreme people go to is they, they get real, you know, this time of year, everyone just comes out with, and I've been guilty of this in the past. Well, this year, I'm going to read the Bible once a month, every month. Never happened. Never happened. I think the best I ever read was like within two months. You know, that's, that's, you know, some people can do it. I'm not saying it's not possible. But you have to understand, if you're going to make a commitment like that, that's a lot of reading. That's hours every day of reading that you have to carve out. And quite frankly, most of us just, you know, they don't have time for that. Um, they really don't. You know, there's only so many hours in the day. There's a lot of other things we got to get done. Other important spiritual things that we need to do. Other important and other things that are going to uh, or add to our quality of life so you know be reasonable in the goal that you set if you've never read the bible one time through i think saying i'm going to read it one time this year is re very reasonable and i think if a person just did that every year for the rest of their life they're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of other people <clears throat> you know but maybe you've read it once a year for the last several years maybe maybe this is the year you say hey i'm gonna do it i'm gonna read it two times you know you bump it up a little bit get a little bit more in uh, <clears throat> but however much you read, um, you need to kind of, well, 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 let me just say this here. This is a helpful tip, I think too, that here, here's a good way to pre you say, well, I don't know how much I can read or should read or what my goal should be. How about you just read what you can just say, I have this amount. Of, let's say you have 30 minutes in the morning, you know, you get up, get your coffee, whatever. And you got a 30 minute, you got a half hour window where you can read the Bible. Instead of saying, you know, I have to read X amount of Bible in this half hour, why don't you just read for a half hour and keep track of how much you read? You follow me? Yeah. And, then, and then determine how much you can read every year. And then say, well, I, in 30 minutes I can read this much. You know, and, and, then, and then go from there. You know, have a baseline to work off of. See what you can read before you determine how much you're going to read, if that makes sense. <coughs> So again, about the average person, 15 minutes a day, they can have the whole Bible read. <coughs> now, how, now, what if you're somebody who wants to read the Bible you know, multiple times per year? How are you going to do that? Well, this is, and, and, and uh, you've got to pay attention if you want to actually put this formula into practice, okay? This is real simple math, but if you follow me, this, this could help you, okay? Because uh, some people just don't think about, about this. So... Take the number, say, say you want to read X amount, like this Bible, you know, I just put this one in the pulpit, so I'm not real familiar with this one, but, you know, well, the, the one I used to have was a great example, because the New Testament had 365 pages in it. So I knew if I read one page a day out of the New Testament, I'd read the whole New Testament in one year, right? <coughs> so, but here's the thing, um, you could take the number of pages in your Bible, and some of them, they, they do, Old Testament has its own count, and the New Testament has its own count. But uh, take the total number of pages in your Bible, right? So if you got your Bible, maybe now is a good time to look if you're thinking about this. You know, so there's 421 pages in uh, the New Testament here. And then I'd have to add the Old Testament. You know, figure out how many pages are in your Bible, right? Take that total number of pages in your Bible and divide it by 365. That number that you get is how many pages you have to read per day to read it one time a year, right? So 
kind of the, the easy example, I had a, a New Testament that was 365 pages long. So I knew if I read one page a day, I'd read it one time. Now what if I want to read it multiple times? All I have to do is multiply that number by the number of times I want to read it. So whatever number you say, hey, you know what? If I, the, I, I, I took the total number of pages, I divided by 365, and I got seven. You know, if I read seven pages a day, I'm going to read the whole Bible in one year. But I want to read it twice. Okay, then you just have to read 14. I want to read tw uh, three times. Well, you got to read 21. Four times, you got to read 28. I'm not going to go any higher than that because I'll probably get it wrong. All right? It's pretty simple math. But I'll tell you what, the last time I shared that in a sermon, people walked up and said, wow, I never thought about doing that. Thank you. Because here's what most people do. They go by chapters. A lot of people will go, well, I'm going to read X amount of chapters. Okay, well, what happens when you get to Psalm 119? <laughs> you read 170. Eight verses, I think it is. That's a lot. That's a lot of verses. That's one long chapter. Well, I'm reading five chapters a day. Well, you got one down. You got four more to go. I mean, go read one, Psalm 119. That's going to take you a, a minute. It's not going to. You're not going to knock it out in five minutes. You know. So I don't. I don't. I don't like to read my Bible like that. I don't read it by chapter. I read it by page number. The number of pages. That revolutionized my Bible reading. Yeah. It makes it. You know, breaks it down. It makes it possible. Uh, gives you a good solid number of what you need to work with. <coughs> so, and another, now, that, uh, again, this is all just suggestion. This is just all tips, tricks on how to read your Bible. Now, here's another suggestion. Focus on reading the New Testament more than the Old Testament. Now, I'm not saying you should read the Old Testament, okay? But where do you think God's putting the emphasis? He's putting it on the New Testament. The, the New Testament is more relevant to us than the Old Testament. I'm not saying the Old Testament isn't relevant. There's a lot of great truths in the Old Testament. There's the law, the prophets, it's all profitable. But we should be, I believe that we as New Testament Christians should be spending more time reading the New Testament than the Old. You know, and, or at least becoming more familiar with it than the Old. Maybe not as much time, but actually reading it more. You know, you could read the New Testament, twelve. you know, reading the New Testament once a month is a little more practical. You know, it's still going to take a commitment. But you say, hey, I'm going to read. Maybe you could say this year, I'm going to read the whole Bible one time, right? But I'm going to read the New Testament an extra time. I'm going to get through the whole Bible, and then I'm going to read the New Testament again. You know, because here's the thing. The Old Testament's much longer than the New Testament. So what we find, especially when we, and I'm going to get into this in a minute, when, we're, when we just start in the front and work our way to the back, it's a long time before you get to the New Testament. You're reading a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of, there's not a, it gets pretty bleak in the, in the Old Testament too. If you've never read it, there's, there's some rough stuff in there where you just, you know, you're about ready to quit on humanity, you know, <laughs> by the time you get into Judges. You're just like, I'm done, man. Then you read the prophets and it's like, good night, what's wrong with people? You know, why does God even bother with us? You know, and then you get in the New Testament, you're like, oh, God loves us, right? <laughs> now you'll see that in the Old Testament. I'm, I'm, I'm being a little, I'm joking a little bit, trying to lighten the mood, but here's the thing. You know, the New Testament is where it's at for us. And I really believe that we should focus more of our time on the New Testament. You know, maybe that's, maybe that's a good goal. Just to say, hey, you know what? I'm going I'm to get to the New Testament X amount of times this year. And, you know, and just get to the Bible once. Maybe that's how you could up it. So, uh, <coughs> that's my suggestion. Is to read the New Testament more than you would the Old Testament. And I'm not saying in quantity and amount of time. But I'm saying the actual times you go through it. You should probably read it more than the Old uh, here's another suggestion to help with your Bible reading. Don't, you know, and it, there's nothing wrong if you want to do it this way, and I've done it this way, when you just read from front to back. Okay, but like I just said, it's, it's, that's a long haul before you, get to the, before you get to the mercy and the hope and the grace and all that good stuff that we love, right? <coughs> there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wrath and indig indignation that you've got to plow through. But, uh, and that's all important to understand and know. So, you know, most Bibles, they come like this one with two ribbons in them. Right? They do that for a reason. So that you can read in two different places. So why don't, why, you know, you could be spending part of your devotional time say, hey, I got to read seven pages to read the whole Bible. You know, so I'm going to read three pages in the Old Testament and four in the New. Or I'm going to read two pages in the New Testament, or the, in the Old Testament and five in the New. Or whatever it is, you know, you could work that out. Maybe you could say there's this many pages in the Old Testament, there's this many pages in the New Testament. If I read this many pages in the Old Testament, I'll get through it once a year. If I read this many pages in the New Testament, I'll read it once a year. 
What I'm getting at is that you, could, you should be reading both concurrently. You know, use, make use of both ribbons. Maybe one day, this day I read the Old New Testament, the next day I read the New Testament. Whatever, you know, but you got to switch it up. You know, I would switch it up or be in both at the same time instead of just trying to plow your way through. Because there's a lot of real important doctrine in the New Testament. And, uh, you know, it, 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 if you read it that way, just front to back, it's like you spent all this time in the Old Testament and then you get all of this just essential, just important doctrine and it's like, yep. I mean, the, the New Testament goes so much quicker than the Old. And it's so, but it's so much more important. There's so many more doctrines that we have to understand in there. So we just go right through it really fast at the very end. And uh, so I, that's why I really encourage people to, to read it concurrently. Have a ribbon in the Old and a ribbon in the New. Now, one of the best ways to, uh, you know, to read your Bible is to get a Bible reading plan. And there are multitudes of these online. I mean, you can, you can just search Bible reading plans. They can have a 90-day Bible reading plan, 180-day, you know, read, read the New Testament X amount of times. There's just a multitude that are out there that you can follow along with. And those are great. And I highly recommend that. You know, one Bible like my, my kids use, they use the one-year Bible where it's a Bible that's already laid out so you're reading so much in the Old Testament, so many in the Psalms, so much in the New Testament, and it, it's called the one-year Bible. You can get it on Amazon. It's cheap. It's just a paperback Bible. But it breaks up your reading, you know, and it has the dates, and it just takes you through the whole Bible in one year. You don't even have to think about it. You don't have to sit there and do the math or anything. It'll take you through it. So that would be another uh, uh, thing you could use. Um, <coughs> you know, another thing you could do is you could, and this gets a little bit more complicated, but maybe you're somebody who's been reading their Bible every day and you know what? You want to switch it up this year. You want to take it to the next level. You know, you could break it up into, this is something I used to do. I don't do anymore just for sake of time. But you could actually break the Bible up. And this is a real interesting study, actually, that the, 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 the symmetry of the Old Testament. And I really don't have time to get into it. But you could break even the Old Testament up into sections. I used to break up the Bible into seven different sections. And I would read out of each section every day. That was one thing. But what I found that was I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how many pages in each section and trying to keep track of that. You know, I could just spend that time reading. So now it's just old and new, right? So, but if you wanted to do that, that kind of keeps it interesting. You don't get so bogged down in one area. Maybe I'll do that again later, you know. Maybe you do that one time this year and then you read it another way in, uh, uh, this year in a, different, in a different way. So you can read Genesis to Deut Deuteronomy, right? That, that's one section. Joshua to Esther would be another section. And then you have uh, Job to Song of Solomon, the poetic books. You got the major prophets, the minor prophets. You got the Gospels and Acts. That's another section. And then the epistles. So you can break the Bible into seven different sections and you can read out of each section every day. But I find that if you just break it up Old Testament, New Testament, you're probably going to be good to go. Because require, reading in that Bible, you know, that, the, your Bible in that manner, you got to keep careful track and you got to do a lot of calculating. But, you know, it could be worth it. How about this? Use an audio Bible. Okay. Now again, this this isn't something. This is something I've done. I'm not. An, I don't read. I'm not a very good audio. I get lost with audio. I'll I'll drift. You know, and it takes. I have to concentrate, especially hard, to make sure I don't start just thinking about other things. Yeah. Now, some people they 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 swear by audio that they do better by audio, and I don't doubt it. You know, I'm not gonna. And I've heard people get up and say. Well, you're, you're supposed to read it, and if you're, not, if you're just listening to the Bible, you're not getting anything out of it. And, you know, like, well, show me that in the Word of God. Well, you, can't, you can't just listen to the, the Word spoken. I mean, that's what they used to do. They used to come and they used to hear the Word spoken to them. Right. That the, the priests would get up and read the, the words of the law to the people. And that's how they learned it. So they learned it through auditory learning. So I don't agree with that, but you could. So I think using a smartphone, you know, get, um, you know, get Scorby, you know, or the Faithful Word app, whoever, whatever voice you like, you know, except for uh, James Earl Jones. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how anybody could ever listen to. And maybe you're listening to James Earl Jones, and I don't mean to offend you, but to me, it's just like it sounds like Darth Vader reading me the Bible. <laughs> this doesn't seem right. Okay, now I have an app on my smartphone, and it's great. It's called Word Project. Word project on Android only. You can't get it on Apple. Um, but it's free. You download the files. It's a, it's the interface is a little touchy, but it works. It's Scorby. It's free. It's the whole Bible. It's audio. It's great. Uh, you know, I know there's Alexander Scorby apps that are out there. And I think those work great too. Yep. And here's the thing. You know, <coughs> if you listen to Scorby, you could even break down how much time you need to spend listening. 
And I've already done the math for you, okay? If you want to know about this, I can give you the details here, but I'll, I'll fire. I know I'm kind of moving quick, but Scorby reads the, the Old Testament in 54 hours. He reads the New Testament in 18 hours. So it would take you 72 hours of listening to listen to the whole Bible being read to you by Alexander Scorby. That breaks down to listening to 20 minutes per day. That's most people's commutes to work. I mean, if you would just get in the car and instead of turning on talk radio or death metal or whatever it is you listen to, <laughs> <coughs> you know, instead of listening to, you know, the, the latest uh, whoever's out there, I don't know, you just listened for 20 minutes on your commute to the Bible being read to you, you would, and you would hear the whole thing in one ear. I mean, think about how easy that is to just listen to the Word of God being read to you in 20 minutes, just 20 minutes out of your day. You'd have the whole thing read. You'd, have, you'd listen to the whole Bible. <clears throat> so that would be great. Um, another thing I, I highly suggest people it do is you know, maybe try uh, listening and reading along at the same time. You know? This is especially great if you're going to be somebody who reads the Scripture. I highly recommend this. Uh, this will make you a better reader because there's, there's words in there that are a little tricky, aren't they? You know, when we get to our, our facts ad, you know, or... You know, Zeruel, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. Like, there's some words in there that, so if you've got Scorby playing and you're reading along, you know, go, oh, that's how you're supposed to say it, you know. And another thing, too, if you're, e even if you're just reading through, don't ever skip over the hard stuff, right. the hard words in your Bible reading. Read those words out loud. Yeah. Why does God give us, you know, all those chronologies and, and all those difficult names in First Corinthians, or First Chronicles, excuse me? Why are all those there? To make you a better reader. Think about it. If you had to stop and sound out those names, you know, you're going to get better at reading. The Bible will make you smarter. Another blessing of reading your Bible. But you could read along and, and listen at the same time and maybe kind of use that to transition to listening only. I don't know, whatever works. So those are just some suggestions this morning. You know, that you need to, you need to do something. Now, I, I, in fact, I've even taken the time to print off two dozen of these checklists. This is what I use. Just a simple... Bible reading checklist. So it's every, it's every book, and every every book has a little box with a chapter number in it. So as you read, you can just cross out the box: in Genesis one, Genesis two, Genesis three, Genesis four. And these are great, especially if you're going to be somebody who wants to like break the Bible into sections. Maybe you could, you could do that. You could make little lines. Here's section one. Here's section two. How many pages per section? And what I like to do is I'll I'll actually like I'll sit down and say oh, I've got to read X amount of pages today. You could see how far, how, how far ahead that's going to take you on your list and you can highlight it. That way you can look at it and say, oh, I know i got to read from Genesis 1 to 10. You just take a highlighter, 1 to 10. And then you can scratch it off as you go. So these are here. These are available for anybody who wants them. You know, I just printed these off. But there's a lot of them out there. Those ones I found, that I found that to be just the simplest, cleanest one I could find. Worked great for me, so help yourself to those. But, uh, you know, use it. You know, have a, have a plan. This, that's, that's the thing you need to do. That's the most important thing if you're going to read your Bible is to have some kind of a plan. How are you going to accomplish it? Right. I mean, isn't that what resolutions are all about this time of year when we make these resolutions? You know, I'm going to lose X amount of pounds. Now, I'm not saying that for myself, okay? I'm just saying that's a little resolution, right? <laughs> you know, I'm going to lose weight. That's my resolution this year, right? Somebody's saying that. Not me. Because <laughs> I don't need to lose weight. Amen? No. <laughs> don't amen that. <laughs> So, but if you did, you know, you'd have to say, well, how are you going to accomplish that? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to eat X amount of calories. You couldn't just say, I'm going to lose weight, and that's it. You'd have to have a plan, you know. Uh, you're whatever it is you're going to do, you have to sit there and figure out how you're going to do it. And that's what this sermon is really trying to help you to do. And that is, that's what that tool there is for, is to help you accomplish that goal. Because I want people to receive the blessing that is there for us if we would just read the Bible. All those blessings that I talked about, that you could be yours in 20 minutes of a commute, in 15 minutes of Bible reading. It's there. And it's not a big ask. Uh, I, think we, I think the thing is, we just look at it like this, and it's just this giant, daunting task. Yeah, but you're breaking it up in little sections. It's, o it's over the course of a year. So I really encourage people to just make that resolution this year and do it. Now, I do want to close by just giving some warnings. Okay, and the things that I've run into and seen other people run into is, uh, and, and one of them would be, don't turn your Bible reading into a math problem. You know, 
And that's what I kind of did there for a minute, where it became more about trying to figure out how many pages per section and how many, you know, and then it just turns into this just like this equation to get the Bible read. And you forget that you're actually supposed to be gleaning something out of the Word of God. You know, don't turn it into a race where you're just trying to, you know, maybe one day, hey, maybe your goal is to read seven pages a day. But you know what? It's a, it's a harder chapter. You got up a little late, you got busy, and you only got through five. Don't, well, now, now next day I got to read nine. No, you don't. No, you don't. You just read seven again. Right. You know, don't turn it into this race. You know, maybe you'll get to this time next year and you'll still have, you know, you'll still have a few more books to go. Or you'll have a few more chapters. You, maybe you're a little bit behind. So what? You're way ahead of where you are this year, if, if that's the case, you know. Uh, if you're not, if you haven't been reading anyway. So don't, don't, you know, like, like, like it's a marathon. Look at it that way. In a marathon, you know, you don't sprint. You know, you have a pace. You have a steady pace. And it's okay sometimes to slow down. And it just, and it maybe, maybe we're not always running. Maybe we're walking. But what we don't want to do is stop. Right. We don't want to just stop in our, dead in our tracks. Let every, you know, because here's the thing. What a lot of people do is they, they get out of it. They start out strong. And then three months into it, you know, something happens. And then weeks go by. They haven't read their Bible. And then they just say, well, I'll try it again next year. That's nine months away. You know, or six months away, whatever it is, whenever that happens, don't do that. Just pick up where you left off and get through it. And, and, and you know, as long as you're making progress, that's what matters. <coughs> so, and the other thing would be be realistic. And I already kind of talked about this. I'm going to read the Bible every three weeks, every four <laughs> weeks, every six weeks. This, this is out there. Laugh, but it's out there. You know, and some people can do it. Some people can read every 30 days. I, and I don't know. They must not do anything else. You know, they must not have a family. I, I don't know. I don't know what the secret is. But, uh, you know, if that, if, you, if that is a realistic goal for you, great. But for the average person, that's probably not. I think 90 days is, is, is a pretty high, that's aiming pretty high. You know, and for some of us, just aiming for one time this year, that's way, high, way higher than where we are this time last year. So that, you know, be, be realistic about your, what you're going to accomplish uh, this year with, with your Bible reading. And, uh, you know, there, I've heard people say, think, don't let other people, you know, discourage you from reading too much. You know, I don't mean to do that. If you're the guy in here and you say, hey, you know what, I can read every 30, I can read the Bible every 30 days. Great. I can read the Bible every 40 days. Amen. I don't mean to discourage you. By all means, do that. You know, I think that's fantastic that you can do that. You know, and I, and I, so I, I want to clarify that. I don't want, because here's, a, here's another warning is don't let the abilities or inabilities of other people discourage you. You know, maybe you're not as good a reader as somebody else. Maybe you don't have as much time to read as somebody else. You know, the, 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 the busy mom or dad, they look at, you know, some single guy, you know, who's just serving the Lord, and he's like, oh, I read the Bible seven times this year. Oh, I need to read the Bible seven times. No, you don't. <laughs> Okay, and you know what? He's not going to read the Bible seven times every year. You know, hopefully, eventually he gets married and has kids. And you know what? And he's going to slow way down. He's going to be just like the rest of us. Now, it's great that a person's taking advantage of that time in their life, that season in their life. You know, and I would encourage you, if you don't have that family, if you don't have those responsibilities yet, to, to you know, up it up, you know, step it up. Do read it more. Do what you can. But uh, don't let that discourage, don't let that be a discouragement to you. Oh, so and so is reading it more. I got to read as much as I can. It's not a competition. It's, you could be a totally different set of circumstances in life. They have way more time on their hands, or whatever it is. Uh, so you know, don't let that be a discouragement to you. And I've even heard, I've even heard preachers get up and say, I've even heard up a preacher get up and say, well, an hour is all anybody can read anyway. Once you read an hour, you can't read anymore. I'm like, think, speak for yourself, buddy. Who, who am I to get up here and say that nobody can read for more than an hour a day? Like, maybe that's, that might be true for me, but is that necessarily true for everybody in the room? No. And in fact, I know another guy, and I heard another preacher get up and say, there is no such thing as reading the Bible too much. Do you think, really think that's the problem we have in this country right now? People are reading the Bible too much? Is that the problem in most churches? Oh, people are reading the Bible too much. <coughs> They're reading more than an hour every day. It's, it's, it's a catastrophe. You know, and the guy who said, oh, you can't read more than an hour, he's not even in the ministry anymore. And the guy who said, There's, you can't read the Bible too much, is doing great things for God. 
So, you know, let that be <laughs> a lesson to you as well. Don't let other people discourage you from, from how much you can or can't read. You need to find out for yourself. You need to be realistic. You need to set a baseline for yourself and, and have a goal. But you have to read. You say, oh, I want all these blessings. That sounds nice. You know, the strength, the, the courage, the wisdom, the knowledge, the blessings of reading the Bible. I want those for myself. You know, the Bible says in, in uh, Psalm 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, he's talking about life. It's not a literal lamp. It's not a literal light, obviously. You know, don't, try, don't pull this out and try to find, you know, the, 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 the keyhole when you get home in the dark. You know, wow, they said it was a lamp. You know? <laughs> maybe if you catch the, the light, street lights off the gilded edge or something, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> what am I even talking about? But here's the thing, like, it is a light and a lamp unto our path of life. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't stumble. If, I, if we walk, when we walk in a dark room, the first thing we do is turn on the light. We reach over and we, we know where it is instinctively. We find it. We turn it on before we do anything else. And that's how we should be treating our Bibles. You know, every day, in your life, you're, you're waking up in a dark room spiritually. Let's get the light on before I walk out in a dark world. You know, we wouldn't, <coughs> we wouldn't just go wandering around the dark in, reality, in, in real life. But do we do that spiritually? You'd be surprised how many of people, are even Christians, are wandering through life with no light, just trying to feel their way around. And they wonder why they stumble. They wonder why they trip. They wonder why they fall. They wonder why everybody else is so much farther ahead. Why, so, why they've got all the scrapes and bumps and bruises that come with stumbling and falling while everybody else looks, you know, so nice. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't, where's your band-aids? Well, I turned the light on. You know, so I was like, oh, don't step on that. Well, there's a pitfall there. There's a snare there. Let me avoid this. Let me avoid that because I got the light on. Right. It's not me. It's this. So uh, let's get in it. You know, let's get the blessings. And that's the, that's the encouragement this morning that I wanted to give to you. That's the resolution we all need to make. You know, right. what are we going to do about our Bible reading this year? Are we going to do it at all? Are we going to up it? Are we gonna, is it going to be more of the same? Maybe that's good enough. Well, let's, let's have something. And, you know, let's get to this time next year because this sermon will be preached again next year. <laughs> where we can, we, maybe, we'll, maybe it's convicting us a little bit this morning, but maybe this time next year we'll say, hey, you know, I remember he preached about that same subject next year, or last year, and I did it. And I could testify, and I could say, amen, what the preacher's saying is right. That this is a light, this is a lamp, that there are blessings to reading the Bible. Let's go ahead and pray.